Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a quick 5 minute tutorial today on feeding your anemones in the reef tank. There's a few different anemones that you can house in a tank which include bubble tips, long tentacles, carpets, rock flowers, sea bays, and condylactus. Now the biology of each of these anemones is fairly similar. They're all going to have an oral disc in the center of their body which serves as their mouth for eating as well as an exit for waste. How about that? They also have a pedal disc, which is essentially their foot that they use to move and hold themselves in place. The column of an anemone is basically everything else you see on the anemone. You can see it stretch out on some anemones like a rose bowl, or you can see it completely flat like it is on a rock flower. This helps the anemone expand and shrink to better suit their needs. And of course you have the tentacles, whether long and stringy like the long tentacles, or tiny little circles of a carpet anemone. They all have nematosis in them in order to sting prey or deter predators. Beware, they can sting you too. Now the first question that comes to mind is, are they photosynthetic? Which basically means they can feed off the lighting in your aquarium. And the answer is yes, they do have a symbiotic relationship with zoanthellae, which lives within the anemone's tissues and provides nutrients to the anemone through photosynthesis. So, if you have some high output LEDs, you have T5s or metal halides, these will keep the anemones very healthy and plenty of nutrition for them to survive. But, an anemone is also a carnivore and loves to eat some meaty foods. I recommend raw shrimp. You can usually buy a bag at the grocery store, just get plain raw shrimp, nothing seasoned. Thaw a piece of shrimp in some of your own tank salt water and then cut the piece of shrimp up into smaller pieces. The mouth of a large rose bulb anemone is only about as big as a quarter. For some carpets and flower rocks, it's even smaller. You simply want to drop this piece of shrimp right over the mouth of the anemone and you'll see that body and the tentacles of the anemone quickly close around that piece of food. It also can be a lot of fun to drop it on the outside tentacles of a carpet anemone and you can watch those tentacles slowly carry it towards its mouth. Within minutes, the piece of shrimp will be completely gone and the anemone will go right back to drifting in the current. If the anemone is given too big of a piece of food, they will eventually spit out what they do not want to eat and digest, which if left in the tank, it can quickly cause some issues with your ammonia and nitrates, so be on the lookout. You will know if your anemone is full and you're feeding too often because they will spit out that food. The digestion of the food in an anemone is not super fast. When first feeding your anemones, I'd recommend once a week for large meaty foods like shrimp. Outside of that, they're getting food from the lights and any food that drops during feeding time with your fish. The anemone can catch those leftover flakes, pellets, and smaller frozen foods like mysis and brine shrimp. If you are one that feeds liquid coral foods such as oyster feast or roe, reef voids, those can all be eaten by the anemone too. During digestion, you might notice the anemone looks deflated, smaller tentacles, drunk up, hiding in a cave where the food is. Don't get to worrying, usually by the next day they are good as new. The nematosis in the anemone tentacles can sting you, but as you can see in the video, the tentacles are touching my hands and the pores on your hands are usually much tighter so the sting can't get through. But if your forearm was to brush against them, you will feel that sting. So stay aware and be careful when you're feeding them. You can also use tongs to drop the food near the mouth if you don't want to get too close with your own hand. If you have a clownfish that's bonded with your anemone, get ready because they'll be able to pitch in and feed the anemone as well. If you have a clownfish that's bonded with your anemone, get ready because they will pinch the fire out of you. Even when they realize you're feeding the anemone, mine would still not try to get me. They are very territorial over their anemone. A fun thing about having them bonded is the clownfish will catch food and bring it to the anemone during feeding times. So you got your anemone in a reef tank and you're asking yourself, do I really need to feed them manually? You really don't have to, but I do recommend you should too because you see an increase in size, faster splitting to produce more anemones, better health, and their colors just look better in my opinion when you have a meaty diet alongside their photosynthesis. Thank y'all for tuning in to the quick five minute guide of feeding your anemones. If you have any other tips, share down in the comments. The more we learn from each other, the better off we'll be in this hobby.